Hey folks, Chris Vandeviver here from WhyLogicProRules.com, the website that helps you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro 10. Today, I wanna to talk about clipping, what it is and why it is so incredibly important to your workflow in Logic. When you're recording, when you're mixing, it is just so important. From talking to many readers and subscribers of the YouTube channel and the website, I found that there's some confusion. When does volume matter? When do I have to be concerned? When do I not have to be concerned? What is clipping? Why does it matter so much? Volume is so important at very specific moments when you're working in Logic. And those moments are when we're creating new audio files. So that could mean recording an audio track, like plugging a microphone into your audio interface and recording a signal, or perhaps plugging an instrument directly into your audio interface. Or maybe we're bouncing a track or region in place, or we're planning on bouncing our entire project out of Logic to send to a friend or upload to SoundCloud or iTunes. These specific moments when we're creating new audio files is when volume matters so very much. So let's dissect what clipping is. In a nutshell, all clipping means is at these very specific moments, your volume is too loud. That's it. So just imagine when you're recording a vocalist. You know, a vocalist can go from whisper quiet to incredibly loud, and that can catch us by surprise, right? Maybe the meter's here with a little tag at the top of the meter, is shining orange at you and you're seeing like plus five or plus 10, that's the moment that we need to be incredibly careful. In this modern era of digital audio, we have so much dynamic range from zero decibels and down. There's so much range and so much fidelity there, but there's a cap to how loud we can record. There's a cap to how loud any audio file can be, and that's zero decibels. So anything that exceeds zero decibels actually can exist. Though Logic is saying plus five, plus 10, when we commit that recording to a new audio file, Logic has to take everything that was above zero and just chop it off. And by chopping off everything above zero, you're hurting the fidelity and the dynamics of your tracks. And what's replaced is distortion because of this aggressive chopping off. So to demonstrate the effects of clipping, I have three guitar tracks here. I plugged my electric guitar into my audio interface and I recorded myself playing a riff at three different levels. Now the first track here is a healthy level. We can see that the guitar track is plenty loud, but it didn't clip at all. In the second track here, I purposefully drove the preamp gain on my audio interface a little loud, so I was clipping as I recorded. Not by a lot, just by a little bit. And it might look like that this signal is pretty quiet, right? But that's just because I've level matched all three regions to be similar to each other. If I adjust the gain in the region inspector back to zero, we can see that it was plenty loud. And the third option here was the nuclear option. I drove up the preamp gain so loud that I was obviously clipping. So we're gonna be able to hear that. And once again, if I adjust the gain parameter in the region inspector, it is quite loud. Okay, so let's compare and contrast. Let's listen to the first DI here. Sounds good, sounds like a DI guitar, not a big deal. We're not hearing any distortion of any sort. Okay, option two. We're gonna hear a little bit of distortion because this track was clipped a little bit. Okay, not terrible, but I can start to pick up on some of the distortion that's occurring on the peaks when I open up that guitar riff. And this is just not desirable. Now with the third option here, let's take a listen to the obvious clipping that's occurring here. Okay, so there's plenty of distortion and generally this is undesirable. Is clipping bad all the time? No, I mean, there are engineers and producers who purposefully clip their tracks, but for most of us, this is not desirable and not good practice. So with the region gain back up to zero, I'm gonna adjust the volume after the fact, but I just wanna watch these two meters just to demonstrate exactly what I'm talking about when I say Logic chops everything off above zero. We know that this track has been clipped, right? But let's just watch the tags at the top to see what is going on. So 
So I know for a fact when I was recording, this guitar track went above zero. But when Logic created the audio file from this recording, it had to chop everything off above zero. And that's why both the meters only show us 0.0. .0. But I have a guitar track here with my guitar plugged in with the preamp gain at the same level that it was when I recorded the third track. And let's just take a look at what the tags show us when I play the guitar before it's turned into an audio file. As you saw, my guitar goes above zero decibels, 1.4, but when we record, it doesn't matter. That 1.4 is gonna get chopped off. You could hear that it was distorting. So this applies, again, to any stage where we're creating a new audio file. For example, maybe with this first guitar track, I decided to use compression, distortion, and I ended up driving up the output volume a lot. So significant amounts of volume. And then I want to bounce this track in place. Perhaps I've done some corrective editing with flex time, maybe just the effects I really like and I wanna bake it into a new audio file. So we go to control B to bounce this region in place or we could go to file, go down to bounce, this track or region in place. At this point, I either wanna do one of a couple of things. I want to either adjust the fader volume to compensate or I want to adjust the output gain to compensate. Or the other option is, is that we could go to this section here called normalize and set it to overload protection only. Now, for now, let's just turn this off so we can see what's gonna happen here. Hit okay. And we can see that the region has been significantly clipped because I was crazy and I turned on the output gain to plus 30. Okay. Now, let's do the exact same thing with the same compression settings, but instead, let's set normalize to overload protection only. Hit okay. And we can see here that the signal is not much louder, but you can see right down here that the signal did make its way to zero decibels. And the handy thing about normalizing with overload protection on, it makes sure that any audio that exceeds zero decibels is turned down to not exceed zero decibels. It's like a safety net. So we can print and process our tracks with the effects and with the craziness that we want but overload protection ensures that we don't end up clipping our new audio files, which is so handy. And the same strategies would apply when we're exporting as well. So if we go to file and we go to export and we export this one track as an audio file, we want to either make sure that we've turned down the volume with our plugin chain, with our fader, or with normalize set to overload protection only, which is my default to ensure that I don't end up accidentally clipping my new audio files. So the last piece of the puzzle is when we're bouncing out our Logic project. So you have 20, 50, or 100 tracks, you've combined it into a mix, and you're going to bounce out to share it with a friend or upload to SoundCloud or whatever. So in this particular case, I'm just gonna turn all these tracks off. I'm gonna introduce a drummer track. And let's just take a look at the levels of drummer as is right now with the stereo output. So let's just hit play real quick. So we can see about negative 4.6, healthy level, not a big deal, right? But if we drive up the signal by about six decibels, let's take a look at the levels now. We can see that we're clipping because on both the drummer track and the stereo output track, we're getting this shining orange and red. So if I bounce out this track as is, and I didn't set normalize to overload protection only, we would get some distortion from the clipping. Okay, we know this. So at this point, you have to make a decision. Either we turn down all the tracks in our project to a healthier level, or you could use normalize overload protection only, or you could open up a plugin on the stereo output, such as the gain plugin, and just drive down the signal to a healthier level. Ideally, on your stereo output, you would have something like the adaptive limiter, which sets a ceiling to ensure that your entire mix does not exceed a certain threshold. In this case, I would set it to negative 0.3, which ensures that no matter how loud my track gets, it does not exceed that level. So at this point, we've discussed all of the different scenarios where clipping is a problem and we have to take care of it. But what about some of the scenarios where clipping doesn't actually cause problems? So in this case, let me turn off the adaptive limiter. Let me turn off the gain plugin. I'm gonna drive this compressor plus 30, but I'm gonna set a gain plugin here to about negative 30. So let's just see what happens here.
Okay, so we can see that the drummer track on its individual channel is plus 25. Yet on the stereo output, it's negative 4.6, and so we don't hear any distortion of any sort. This is a very interesting circumstance of the architecture of Logic. Logic internally is a 32-bit floating point system, which means that we could literally be clipping every single track in our session, but as long as we're not clipping the stereo output, we won't have any problems of clipping and distortion when we bounce out. That's why each of the tags are different colors. The orange implies, hey, you're clipping, but it's not necessarily a problem, just letting you know, while in the case of the stereo output, it shines red to say you're clipping and it's actually going to be a problem if you try to bounce out. But if we turn off this game plugin, and remember this compressor sets a plus 30, I'll adjust the level after the fact to not blow you away. I'm gonna hit play. Now there's no level adjustment on the stereo output. We're hitting plus 25 on the stereo output and it's distorting to show us what it's gonna sound like when we bounce out of Logic's 32-bit floating point system. So it's really handy because as long as we're not creating new audio files, we're not actually clipping anything inside of Logic. So in a nutshell, clipping 99% of the time is not desirable. And we have to be extra cautious with levels anytime we're creating a new audio file, whether we're recording a new audio track, we're bouncing or exporting different tracks that are gonna create new audio files, or when we're bouncing our entire project out of Logic. So I hope that was helpful for you. As always, if it was, I highly suggest subscribing to the YouTube channel, YLogic Pro Rules, or subscribing on the website itself, ylogicprorules.com. Every week I'm posting new videos, new posts, new emails to help you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro 10. Thanks so much.